Here's our whole salmon, okay? Whole salmon is a round fish, all right? There's pretty much two categories of fish. You have flat fish and round fish. A round fish pretty much has the fillets on both sides of the body, okay? Uh, you can actually see it's really nice and firm. I'm gonna talk about the inspection points that you would check for a round fish when you receive it, okay? First thing being the smell. It shouldn't have a strong odor. It shouldn't smell like fish. It shouldn't smell like rotted eggs or sulfur, it should actually smell like uh, seaweed and like the ocean at low tide. Right? Um, next thing you would check for is the eye. The eye is not cloudy, kind of would look like glaucoma, but it would be clouds in the, in the inside pupil and it would be sort of not too sunken in or deep. Right? Um, this fish was actually frozen by accident, we could edit that out later. Okay. So, Actually, even though it was frozen, you could actually, the next point that you would look for is resiliency. So you can see how the flesh bounces back, okay? Mm -hmm. If it kept that indentation, that would be a bad sign that the, the flesh was breaking down. All right, the gills are still a nice sort of red color. If they get too brown or kind of like a gray or really like a weird dark color, that's a bad sign. The, the fish is still very moist. Um, the scales or the skin is not coming off in any weird fashion, okay? When we check the inside of the belly, all right, we want to make sure that there's no, there, there might be little pieces of um, organs, organs that were there, but most of it is removed. Uh, but what we're also looking for is that there's no sort of puncture wounds, okay? Sometimes with larger fish, you may have like holes or uh, gaffer hooks where they pull them out of the water. Uh, salmon are more um, red in pools, so they're easier to distract. However, there may be some puncture holes from when uh, the fishmonger eviscerated it, okay? And what could happen is the fish uh, monger can have his knife cut one of those internal organs which is full of bacteria, just like our own stomachs and our own intestines, and then puncture through the rib cage into the flesh, and then now that bacteria is technically eating the flesh from the inside out. We technically call that belly burn, and it will look like a bad sunburn with like a hole, like an open wound. Um, you want to avoid that because that's, even though sometimes it's beneficial bacteria, uh, it can, can ruin the integrity of the fish. Okay, um, what else? So, a couple tools that you need. When you cut it, all right, you actually want to have, so I have like my standard chef knife, but if you notice, it's pretty much at the widest point the same length of the knife. That could be dangerous for cutting yourself. So you just want to have like a knife that's actually longer so you can actually see it, okay, which is a safe deal, all right. So, when we buy fish, all right, this is pretty much what we call a whole drawn salmon, all right? By drawn meaning that the insides were taken out, all right, the internal organs were removed. But the head is still on and the tails are still on, all right? If you order a salmon drawn and dressed, what that would mean is that it would be eviscerated and then the, t uh, the tail and the heads and the fins would be cut off, so you would just have pretty much technically the salmon body, all right? If you had drawn, dressed, and filleted, or technically you just say, let me get a salmon fillet, you'd actually have the side of the salmon cut off and moved and everything done in red. Right? So that's the different ways that you can market it. Obviously, the more the fishmonger cuts it, the more the price goes up. Right? All right, so let's get it started. Now, you really, obviously, because your hands have your fingerprints are the really good grip, and fish can be kind of moist. I don't recommend doing gloves when you do it um, because you want to have a good grip. You also want to have a towel or something to even grip it even more, okay? And once you start, pretty much there's, you just got to sort of finish the job, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the side from one side and then what we'll be left with is the head and the spine together, right? All right, so I start off by going underneath this front sort of fin right here, right? I'm gonna cut this to a downward angle until I can't cut no more because I'm hitting the spine. And even with a serrated knife, it's actually really hard to cut that spine, right? So I open it up, and what I'm actually gonna do, if you're watching, I'm gonna turn the blade, spin it around, okay? And now I'm actually, my knife is resting on the spine, right? And with a slight downward angle, I'm actually just gonna go down the spinal column, lift it up so I don't cut the meat down here, right? All right, and my blade is just sort of 
resting right along and all the way up to the tail. And what I have is a nice piece of side of sand, all right? Just like that, all right? Same with the other side. I'm going to come in and go that front fin, turn my blade so that it's on the spine. And just work my way down. Okay. And this popping sound that you hear is actually going through the pin bones that we're going to have to remove in a second. side like that right and there's our spinal column now as far as carmazay chefs go what we can do a lot of cultures will boil the fish head make a soup out of it all right you can take a knife or a spoon and scrape up all this flesh and use it for like a salmon mousse or salmon sausages or make little salmon meatballs for a soup okay so all this meat can be salvaged bones can be made into stock as well. Salmon stock, really not that popular because salmon is so oily with those omega-3s. It's actually a stronger stock, but it's good if salmon is the main ingredient in your soup. Okay, so next step is removing this belly skin. Okay, and actually there's two sets of bones that we're dealing with now. We have the bones that technically were the rib cage, which are the same ones that protect our internal organs, okay? And then we have the crossbones from the spinal column, right? So there's two sets. Now one could be removed with a knife, the other one you would need some type of tweezer to remove that, okay? All right, so first what I'll do is I'll fill out and see where those tips of the bones are ending. What I'll do is I'll take my knife and just slowly run it underneath to find those bones. Okay, so you can see how it's starting to come up right there, okay? okay. As I slowly cut and lift, just sort of trimming it out over those bones, or under them actually. There's always one and two. I just want to sort of fabricate the fish down to that bottom part of the skin. And notice how I have two cutting boards set up too, so I have good coverage. for the fish. That way I don't have to keep sliding it back and forth if I want to cut something. Okay, and again, there's some more belly meat that I can use for other ingredients. Okay, so, I have this little fin right here. I'll cut it off. All right, now, for the bones, all right? So, obviously you can tell by the taper Here's the tail end, all right, here's where the head was, okay? So if you go, if you run your finger, actually a lot of people think, see this line right here, all right? They think that's where the bones are. Actually, it's right above it. You can actually start to see these little dots right here. If you were to take your hand and run it towards the tail of the head, you won't really feel anything, but as soon as you go head to tail, actually you can feel them pop up and they go about halfway down the carcass to about the midpoint right there. All right, so to remove them, what you want to do, you obviously want to remove them because that's what can puncture your mouth, especially the roof of your mouth, the soft palate, um, if you don't remove them. So what I want to do is, as I find them, I'm actually going to pinch the flesh around it. That way, it doesn't rip it too much. So I'll just go down the line. I'll show you a couple without my hand in the way. <coughs> 
against the trees or something to get a good grip. Now the flesh is quite firm. If the flesh was a little bit looser and I was pulling my sort of jagging it up, then I would want to sort of pinch down. so they won't attract anything from the flavor of the fish. Usually it's the spot, spinal column in the head that's good for stock. All right, so since we're dealing grab locks today, we would like to keep our skin on, all right, to hold it together, all right? But really you could do it without. So for the purpose of the video, I'll show you actually how to remove the skin. All right, so to do that, now I could use my chef knife because I cut down quite a bit of the body, right? So to do a skinned filet, what you'll actually do is about an inch from the tail, just cut a base cut at an angle down straight to the skin, right? I'm gonna take my towel and get a really good grip. I'm gonna pull tight now because it's moist, the skin is almost like sort of glued to the cutting board, so as I pull, it's actually getting tighter. I'm not trying to drag it towards me. I'm just trying to make it taut, right? All right, so now, again, with that same sort of downward angle, almost like how they used to sort of sharpen razor blades instead of just going straight down because they're cut through the skin. What I'm going to do is pulling tight. I'm just going to sort of rock back and forth. And if I need to choke up or get a better grip, I will. Um, a little bit cold, yeah, the flesh will be a little bit firmer, but... Alright, so technically, I'm more just sort of holding my knife down and just pulling it through it. And then I have the skin side, and then my skin, a little bit of meat, but that's okay. Alright, and so we have our boneless, skinless app. Cool.